Welcome to Cancer Lesson 1.1, Why Should We Care About Cancer? The goals of this lesson are to explore how cancer is not just a disease of the elderly and to introduce how lifestyle choices affect risk of developing cancer. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to demonstrate why cancer is relevant to young people, identify lifestyle choices that may lead to increased risk of developing cancer later in life, and relate how metastasis is significant in cancer mortality. We will achieve these goals by analyzing a case study on Steve Jobs and by engaging in a Socratic discussion. To prepare for this lesson, you'll need to review the following key scientific concepts that will be presented throughout the lesson. First, cancer is not necessarily a disease that begins in old age. Although symptoms often occur in older patients, the first cancerous cells may have arisen when the patient was young. Second, a tumor only becomes a cancer once it can spread from its primary site of origin. We use the term metastasis to describe the spread of cancerous cells around the body. Also review the difference between benign and malignant tumors. A benign tumor is a tumor that does not spread from the site where it originates, whereas a malignant tumor does spread from the site where it originates. Another key concept is how to calculate the tumor doubling rate. This helps us answer the question, when did the tumor begin to grow? You can review the scientific content in the background reading provided for you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in this lesson. The teacher manual or lesson plan provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of lesson structure. And the student workbook provides additional explanation for students. Be sure to print the lesson worksheet and the homework worksheet. The key points of the do now are that the first stage of cancer is uncontrolled cell growth to form a tumor, and whether or not a tumor metastasizes or spreads is more relevant to its impact than its size. Have students reflect on the relationship between when clinical symptoms appear and when the cancer first develops. Sometimes the two stages are very close, but often the appearance of a cancer does not give us any idea when the tumor first appeared. Explain that while large tumors can impair function of the organ they arise in, sometimes small tumors can be just as deadly if they have the ability to spread to other parts of the body and grow there. The key points of the activity are first that for a tumor to form, the rate of cell division must exceed the rate of cell death. Cell growth estimates can be used to calculate the time for a tumor to grow and knowing how fast a tumor doubles in size allows us to back calculate when it first formed. We'll get there by reviewing a case study on Steve Jobs. First, we review the vocabulary that will be used throughout this lesson. A tumor is a mass of cells that is increasing in size because its rate of growth is faster than its rate of death. However, not all tumors grow at the same rate. A fast-growing benign tumor can be dangerous, whereas a slow-growing benign tumor will not be. Similarly, a slow-growing malignant tumor may not be life-threatening. Next, we watch a short clip of an interview from the show 60 Minutes with Steve Jobs' biographer, Walter Isaacson. He states that Steve Jobs felt he had made a fatal error when he delayed his pancreatic surgery by nine months. Next, we review a timeline of Jobs' diagnoses and treatments. Students will discuss a question that the interviewer in the 60 Minutes interview with Walter Isaacson asks regarding the nine-month delay in treatment. Students should provide their opinions as to whether Jobs' decision to delay his treatment affected his life expectancy. The following slides accompany the lesson worksheet, which students will use to calculate when Steve Jobs' cancer originated. In normal tissue, the rate of cell division is about the same as the rate of cell death, but in tumors, there are more cells growing than there are cells dying. 
Tumors can be detected when they are about 10 millimeters in diameter, but only start affecting the function of an organ when they are about 100 millimeters in diameter, or containing about 1 billion cells. We use the tumor doubling rate to calculate the time required for a tumor to grow. Next, we move on to the question, when did the first tumor begin to form in the pancreas? In order to answer this question, students will need to know two pieces of information. First, how long does it take for a tumor to double in size? And you can animate the slide to show them that it takes approximately 10 months. And how many times the tumor needs to double to make a tumor of 1 billion cells, or when it starts to affect the function of the organ? The doubling table provides students with this information. Now ask the students when did the first tumor begin to form? You will want to animate the slide to show students how to calculate this answer. From using the, the doubling table, we know that if there are 1 billion cells in a 10 millimeter tumor, then the tumor will have doubled 30 times since it began. We know that it doubles every 10 months, therefore it has taken 300 months or 25 years to reach that size. Since he was diagnosed at age 48, the tumor cells first appeared when he was 23 years old. Next, we move on to asking the question, given that his tumor was affecting pancreatic function when it was removed, did postponing its removal by nine months kill him? Students should note that Jobs did survive for seven years without most of his pancreas, so clearly merely not having a pancreas wasn't sufficient to kill him. But during his surgery, surgeons found out that his cancer had spread to the liver. Now we review the concept of metastasis. Define the term metastasis as spread of a cancer cell from its primary site of formation to a secondary location. This is a key concept. Because the pancreatic tumor had metastasized to the liver and affected its function, Jobs needed a liver transplant. Now we ask, when did the tumor spread to the liver? The liver cancer was detected when Steve Jobs was 49 years old. Since there are 1 billion cells in a 10 millimeter tumor, the tumor will have doubled 30 times in the pancreas since it first formed. An important point to note here is that metastatic tumors double faster than primary tumors, every eight months rather than every 10 months. Therefore, it has taken 30 times eight, 240 months or 20 years to form. Since he was diagnosed at age 49, the liver metastasis first appeared when he was 29 years old. The tumor had also metastasized to the lung as well as the liver, and Steve Jobs eventually died of respiratory failure due to lung metastasis when he was 56. Given that there were one trillion cancer cells found in his lung, have students back calculate when the tumor metastasized to his lung. The key points of the wrap-up are that the problems that Steve Jobs faced in his 40s and 50s were from tumor cells that had metastasized in his 20s, and that lifestyle factors likely both promoted cancer and delayed its symptoms. We'll get there by finishing the lesson worksheet. In the wrap-up, we return to the question posed at the beginning of the lesson. Give the students a minute to respond to question eight on their worksheets. Once they are finished, have them discuss their answers. They should conclude that delaying his treatment by nine months likely had little impact on the overall outcome since his tumor had already migrated to the liver and his lungs when he was in his 20s. So what caused this cancer? Now we discuss the lifestyle factors that could have precluded Jobs to developing cancer. But why did Steve Jobs not die in his 20s or 30s? Of course, we can't know for sure, but as we will learn later on, our immune system takes care of many developing tumors, preventing them from persisting and growing. Additionally, Steve Jobs prioritized a healthy lifestyle. For example, he ate a strictly vegan diet. This may have also slowed the growth of his cancer. As the students shall see, most people dying of cancer are over 55 years old. So for the past 50 years, they have been exposed to numerous carcinogens, and any of these could have initiated tumors that may eventually lead to cancer. Yet cancer also affects young people, and this leads us to what the students should do for homework. 
For homework, students should write a one to two paragraph report on the choices that they or their friends make in their day-to-day -day lives that may predispose them to developing cancer at an earlier age. One of the most common questions that students ask is, if it takes so long for cancers to grow, why do children sometimes die of cancer? Students might be confused about how this is possible since they have just learned about the kind of cancer jobs have that takes decades to manifest. There are such things as fast-growing cancers, which can develop very rapidly to life-threatening illness. For instance, there are certain cancers of the blood, such as acute childhood leukemias, which account for 30% of all cancers in children. Another question students have is, if cancer cells divide rapidly, why does it take 10 months for a single cancer cell to grow? Does 10 months measure one cell dividing? The answer is that 10 months does not measure one cell dividing. Rather, it takes 10 months on average for a group of cancer cells to double. This time measures, for example, the time it would take the tumor to have 100 cells to 200 cells. The idea here is that of net growth. In a tumor, cells are both dividing and dying, but the net growth is positive because more cells are dividing than dying. At the end of the lesson, collect student worksheets to assess how students used mathematical thinking to calculate doubling times of cells. This lesson sets up why learning about cancer matters and introduces the importance of lifestyle choices. Throughout Unit 1, we will revisit the concept of how lifestyle choices can affect our cancer risk. Don't forget, if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback to let us know, you can contact any of the CTSE team members and we'll be happy to help you.